Building in games is a lot of fun, especially when it's combined with a game which lets you adventure. From building massive cities and structures in Minecraft where you can relax before setting off to distant biomes, to Valheim where your base is a safe place to lay down your sword in a world of constant violence. These places give you a sense of accomplishment when you start with nothing and eventually work your way to success, leaving a permanent reminder on the landscape of the journey so far. These are things I've always wanted to do in Skyrim. While you can buy houses and Hearthfire lets you build your own, I've always dreamt of more. What if I could forge a path from nothing to eventually building a city and becoming a Jarl? Well, with mods, I've made that a reality. I can open my own mind to gather materials and start producing goods. I can purchase a plot of land and turn it into a farm providing vital crops for expansion. I can open a port, allow my products to be shipped all over Tamriel. I can create a majestic manor and fully functioning village to house my family and those of my employees. And finally, I can turn an empty and unassuming plane into a grand city bustling with life and opportunity. Let's begin by introducing Alan Allenson, the last of a long line of Allens who were once the owners of the biggest mine in Skyrim. While on a gap year in Cyrodiil, Alan's father passed away and the mine eventually fell into the hands of a group of bandits. Being left the deeds to the mine, Alan returned and made a deal with the Yokel Jarl. He provides cheap materials and goods when the mine is operational, in return for the Jarl getting rid of the bandits. And so, that's where our grand journey begins, on day one with Alan arriving to the newly liberated mine with no experience in building or mining. He has a lot to learn. The first task is clean up the mess left behind by the bandits and try to salvage any materials that can be reused in the mine. Spending all of day one inspecting the condition of the mine and cleaning up pays off, as from the rubbish Alan finds a bunch of logs, iron fittings, stone and some gold which can be reinvested. Day two and Alan gets hard to work using the mine's natural resources, gathering iron which is used to make nails and iron fittings and corundum which is used to make locks also stashing any rare gems he finds to sell. On day three, after a couple of sleepless nights scared of noises and shadows, Alan sets up a small camp next to the mine. Now he can warm himself by the fire and catch a glimpse of the stars before getting a peaceful night's sleep. He also smelts the ore gathered from the previous day to prepare for the day of building ahead, making sure to check his plans so all of the materials needed for his first official building project are accounted for. Day 4 starts with the crafting of nails, hinges, locks and iron fittings, all from iron ingots, which will be used to make the mine's internal scaffolding. The rest of the day is spent building the internal gates to add security to the mine, and then the scaffolding to provide a safe place to work for miners and prevent any cave-ins. On day 5, with some of the leftover bandit materials, Alan makes some minecarts, which could be used to access other parts of the mine and transport any ore gathered to the storage areas. On day 6, using some leftover steel from when the mine was operational, Alan makes the internal material storage. This is where all ores and ingots will be stored before being shipped or made into armours and weapons. And on day 7, Alan makes the internal finished goods storage to store the armour and weapons the blacksmiths will start creating when the mine opens. Day 8, and Alan had finally run out of the scavenged material so headed out to gather some clay and logs. After a walk along the coast and a lovely view of the distant solitude, Alan found a patch of clay and spent the day gathering and transporting as much as possible back to the mine. On day 9 we travel to Morthal, which is the nearest settlement to speak to the mill owner about making a deal for sawn logs. Okay, we've got a lovely little town here, let's have a look around. Good afternoon. Lovely architecture everywhere. What's down here? This looks like the blacksmith. Definitely be paying them a visit. Yeah. We've got a lot of goods to sell to them. Over here, I think, is an alchemy shop. So I might get some fruit and veg. Tavern. Definitely going to pop in there for a drink before I head home. And I think that's what we're here for. Over there is the mill where we can get our sawn logs. So yeah. I'll pop over and speak to the owner now. So I've just finished speaking to the mill owner, he said as long as I cut my own logs, I can take them for a cut price. So I'm going to put them onto this mill, saw them, and then I'll transport as many as I can home. Just need to press this, 
and then it cuts them for me, puts them on a pile, and then I can load them up on a wagon. Job done. One log on its way. With a deal in place to keep any logs we cut ourselves, the rest of the day is spent at the mill, making sure there's enough logs for the next few projects. After transporting the sawn logs back home, Alan spent day 10 making the start of the exterior scaffolding. This will be used as a layout for the buildings needed to support a thriving workforce out in the middle of nowhere. Day 11 was spent building docks. This will be important for transporting goods, but also supporting the mine with fresh fish for food, as well as letting the miners take in the sights along the peaceful river. Day 12, and the food stores ran out, so Alan hunted for meat and for leather that could be used for furniture in the mine. He also bumped into a local garrison of soldiers and stopped by to say hello, making a deal to provide material for their armour and weapon repairs, in return for them patrolling near the mine for protection. Day 13, and with winter fast approaching, Alan needed a permanent home, as the camp wouldn't be warm enough. So he set out to find some stone. This would be used to support the buildings outside, making them tough enough to withstand the harsh winter winds. Day 14 quickly came along, and the entire day was spent building a cabin. For now, it just had a basic bedroll, but at least it'd keep him warm. Day 15, and Alan needed more leather for furniture, so spent the day hunting until he came across a lonely fox. What has happened over here? Hey little guy, you okay? Are you hungry? Let's do some investigating. What's your name? Sweet roll. Okay, at least you've got a collar. Is this your owner? Okay, he's got some goods on him. Let's take them. He doesn't need them anymore. Okay, sweet rolls and a journal. Okay, so I've just read through the journal. This is his owner and his favourite food, sweet rolls. So I'm going to give him one and see what happens. There you go, fella. Okay, you seem to like it. Come with me. Got a home you can live in. Will he follow me? Yes. Come on. Let's get you home. I don't know how long you've been out here, but you must be freezing. On day 16, and wanting to get Sweet Roll used to his new home, Alan built a stable and cart. It'd be useful for transport, but until we get a horse, it'll make a comfy bed for Sweet Roll when we're busy outside. Day 17 was the first trip to the big city of Solitude to sell gems and other goods to wealthier people, and to gather supplies to finish the cabin at home. Overwhelmed by a long day of travelling and the vibrant city streets, Alan had an afternoon stroll before setting up his stall to sell some of his goods. Well, good day. Hello sir, you looking to buy? Need something. All right, then. Oh thank you, I'm surprised you didn't steal it but... I'll take it. Hello, sir. What are you looking to buy today? Need something? All right, then. Oh, thank you. Uh, I okay, I think I'll pack up now. I get the I get the points. As the evening rolled in, Alan packed up his shop and sold the rare gems to a local merchant, and with the profit, bought some glass, straw and goat horns for furniture, and after a very busy day, headed into the local tavern to buy a room for the night and get to know the locals. You know what, the people are solitude now at a party, they're getting properly into that. After a long night of drink and dance, Alan headed to bed. And while he sleeps off his hangover, now is a great time for you to like, subscribe and turn notifications on. It really helps out a small channel like mine and I'm building a brilliant community here and I'd love for you to come along for the ride. On day 18, after a late start, Alan got a cart ride home and despite the hangover, got hard to work creating the outside forge and storage area. This would be used to convert ore into ingots and prepare them for shipping around Skyrim. We even had a visit from our new friend, the executioner who we'd spent the night drinking with in solitude. What a rare treat that was. 
On day 19, we finally finished the house after getting all of the goods needed from our city trip. So I finally finished the cabin, so I thought I'd do a little tour in here. I've got a nice little kitchen area, sitting area. Questionable wall mount, but I'm sure I'll grow to love it. Head downstairs. Storage area for all of my food. In here, very spacious master bedroom. Desk to do some late night work. And over here, the best part of it all, a geothermal hot tub. Using a nice little geothermal spring I found under the mine. Uh, in here, Sweet Roll's room. He loves that rug, sleeps on it all the time. It's nice and warm for him. The executioner also stayed in here, and it's a place where the kids can stay if I have them down the line. Day 20 came along, and after a great night's sleep, the mine office and blacksmith was built. The office was very important, as it would allow me and a manager to hire workers, and allow me to set if the business will store goods or sell them for gold. Day 21 was spent furnishing the office, ready for opening day. Lovely new office is done, let's do a little tour of this as well. Got an enchanting room slash storage room, this will let me store all the weapons I make, all of the armour I make. And obviously enchant if we go down that route. Okay, in here is where the magic happens. And store our valuables, but the most important part if we can get past sweet roll is the earn and safe. In here, when the mine's operational, we're making a profit, we can collect money from in there. And then finally, my cosy little office area. Nice seat in front of the fire when that's on. The income ledger where I can keep an eye on how much money we're making. And the hiring ledger where I'll be able to hire the staff once the mine's fully operational. But it's a nice little space, I'm very happy with this. And on day 22, the building was finished after furnishing the blacksmith quarters to make a cosy place to live and sleep and creating another workshop outside so they can make goods with a lovely view. On day 23, we build the Mead Hall. With nothing around the mine for miles, this would be a great place to gather and have some fun in the evenings. Day 24 saw the Mead Hall get furnished, ready for some wild after work social events. Usual tour of what we've built and this is the Mead Hall. So we walk in. Lovely seating area with a nice art piece. Over here, a very big bar because we're expecting to hire a lot of people and they'll need somewhere to relax once they've done a hard day's work. So plenty of ale, plenty of mead, should be fun. Over here, more seating and a very big fireplace. Up here in the frozen north, it's very cold. So people will be gathering around here with the drinks, warming up and telling life stories. Heading downstairs is a nice kitchen area. You've got an alchemy lab to make some herb mixers to use in the kitchen. Again, cooking pot and a big fireplace. We've got a lot of food to prepare, so this should be really good for that. And then we've got an oven. I've got some test pies in there just to see if it's working okay. But they're not going to be anywhere near as good as the chef's. Over here. I imagine this is going to be a bedroom for whenever people move in. And then here, we've got a guard's quarters. We haven't got any guards or employees yet, but... A lot of them will be staying in this building. I think it looks quite cosy. And then down there is some weird cellar. And the door's locked, so I'm not sure where it goes. But if it's closed, it's closed for a reason. So let's just ignore that. And after 25 long days, the workers' barracks could be built inside the mine. It might be unconventional, but I'm sure they'll add a personal touch when they move in. On day 26, we head to Solitude again to sell some more gems and goods to be able to afford the first workers. They cost quite a lot of gold, so everything valuable we own is being invested to get this mine off the ground. Day 27 is hiring day, and after sending off carrier pigeons with job offers, all we can do is wait. So we have a relaxing stroll down the coast, and relax with sweet roll before an early night. Day 28, and the workers are finally here, so let's go and say hello. Okay, so I've waited around and all the employees have finally turned up, so we'll do a little introduction. We've got Tovis, who's the main mine manager. He's going to be keeping an eye on all of the books for me, making sure operations are running smoothly. We'll just pop in and say hello to Alsif. How are you doing? Moved in very nicely. Everything's operational. Could start making some good money from her, her work. Yeah. As you can see, she's already started. Heading over to the meat hall, someone's brought some chickens and a cow so we can get some fresh eggs and milk. And then also the chef started digging out a garden so we can get things planted. 
And we've popped into the meat hall just to say hello and it's looking busy already. Everyone's settling in, getting to know each other. Jorvan, the barkeeper, how are you doing? We've got our bard over here practicing some tunes. And then a few of our miners enjoying the drinks. Looks really cozy in here, I must say. And then downstairs, chef hard at work. Brought all of his ingredients. We're going to have to get some sort of shipment up because we can't grow much here. And again, he's got some pies in at my request. Looking brilliant. And after the introductions, the drinks are on me as we get to know each other. Drinking in front of the roaring fire and sharing life stories. The bard has a few too many drinks though, so we head downstairs to check on her. Um, you know what? <laughs> I'll leave. I'll leave you to it. I'm continue serenading him. Good luck. Day twenty nine, and it's officially the first day of mining. So we head down to do some inspections and to make sure everyone has sobered up from the last night. Okay, it's the first day. The mine is open, so I'm popping down to do an inspection, see what everyone's getting up to. There might be some hangovers, but I'm sure they'll be fine. Atara over here is mining some iron ore. Should be good for weapons and armor. Stag over here mining silver ore so we can turn that into jewelry. Should be a really good profit. And then in here finally Vogar is mining corundum ore. Which once we melt down we can turn into ingots and locks which are needed for the mine. Day 30 is used to build the guard tower for the mine. With us now producing valuable goods it will give me peace of mind to have some capable warriors close by to keep everyone safe. Day 31 and we have interviews with a number of candidates for guard posts, eventually settling on two day shift guards and two night shift guards. Afternoon Scarvold, anything to report? No, good. You're looking a bit cold up here, I'll make sure to get a fire. Day 32 sees us tell the workers to store the goods we produce so they can be made into materials and then head to Morthal to make a quick deal with the blacksmith to provide him with ore. We can provide this much quicker than his deliveries from Dawnstar and along a much safer route. Day 33, and with the mine in safe hands, we head to Solitude to make some sales. Money is low from the investments, so I sell all of the valuables found over the last couple of weeks. After returning home on day 34, me and the guards build a gate and wall around the mine. This was great advice from the guards and adds extra peace of mind for me and the workers who were worrying about reports of bandits in the area. Day 35 was here and was spent building a fishery. This would provide a great source of food to the community and would let me expand the workforce without worrying about where the next meal was coming from. Day 36 was spent furnishing the fishery, giving the fish a comfortable place to relax and adding all the equipment they would ever need, plus some extra lines so everyone can let off some steam fishing down at the docks, taking in the surroundings. Day 37 and we finally welcome the new fisherwoman. Okay, let's say hello. Sigvo, welcome. See you hard at work already, got all the fishing lines set up, very good. Caught some fish already, starting to get them into the kitchen, very nice. Bedroom, looks very cosy. Some books there, let's have a look, what are these? <laughs> oh no, <laughs> Lusty Argonian made one and two, okay. And then some sort of religious statue looking right at the bed. Um, bit questionable. Sigva, you might want to turn that statue away when you're looking at those books. Just a just a thought. Okay, speak to you later. Day 38 was more relaxed, taking inventory of the ores we've been gathering since opening. Alan then made the decision to start selling the ores as gold was running out after hiring the new staff. And there was plenty of expansion still to do. Day 39 saw the mine's first official profits after an early morning shipment was sent out to Morthal and Solitude. This was a huge morale boost to everyone who'd been working so hard. Day 40, Alan headed into Solitude to buy some vegetables to plant in the garden and to get some treats for the workers who deserved it for all their hard work. And after getting back got to planting cabbage, carrots and potato which would really help the chef freshen up the menu. Days 41 through to 55 were spent saving up gold for the next expansion. The new mine shaft was an expensive 15,000 gold. All mine profits were collected and put towards the project, and any gems found were taken to Solitude to sell for good amounts of gold. Also travelling to Morthal to personally deliver new ingots to the blacksmith to show off the quality the mine was producing, and generating a regular new order. 
Day 56 was the day Alan had been saving for and he officially commissioned the next mineshaft to be excavated, which would take the workers around 3 days. Days 57 through to 59 were spent waiting for the excavating to finish. Alan took the rare downtime to relax in the cabin and his geothermal hot tub which made winter bearable, enjoying the evenings in the tavern with all of his close friends, plenty of mead flowing, and admiring the progress he'd made over the last couple of months. Day 60 and the excavation was finished, so Alan got hard to work making the scaffold and the workers would need to safely work in the mine, and making the carts needed to transport the ores back to the surface. Day 61 was spent making the new storage for the shaft. This lets workers store the mine door and reduces trip hazards. Day 62 was spent making break areas and furnishings the miners could use. With it being such hard work, Alan wanted to make sure they could relax if they wanted to take a break. On day 63, the last task before hiring new miners was to build them a new barracks to sleep. It'll be cosy once they move in, and the commute to the mine is very quick, so ideal when they want to head back after a hard day's work. On day 64, Alan headed into solitude in the early hours to interview candidates for the new jobs, and after finding his ideal choices, headed home to send out the carrier pigeons with the good news. Day 65, and the new workers had settled in and were hard at work, so Alan did his usual inspection to see what new ores he'd be able to gather and transform into goods. Tidings. Got Silith hard at work, getting Oracalcum, that'll be useful for crafting some armours. Got a very nice break area down here as well, good to see that they're eating well and can relax. Okay, Miner Bonato, mining Quicksilver which can be combined with the Moonstone or Ebony ingots to make some nice armour. Orm and Joftir over here, collecting Moonstone ore which I believe when melted down and combined with Quicksilver makes elven armor and weapons. Days 66 through to 80 were again spent saving money for the final mine expansion, with the next mine shaft costing a huge 35,000 gold. Every bit of gold from the mine was invested, with Alan making a nice profit each day. Any gems had been found were sold, but Alan also had some armor and weapons from the blacksmith which he could sell in the various towns. On day 81, we'd finally managed to save enough to pay for the expansion. And construction officially began, which took until day 83 due to the amount of rock the miners had to break through. Keeping himself busy, Alan helped around the tavern with barkeeping, cooking, and burning the chef's specialty pies, also tending to the crops. Day 84, Alan could begin work on the finishing touches on the final mine shaft, adding in the usual safety scaffolding and getting the mine carts brought down for transportation. Day 85 saw the building of the ore storage area and more break areas for the workers. This shaft was hundreds of feet down, so regular breaks were needed in this stuffy environment. Day 86 was the final building project with the addition of the new minor barracks, ready and furnished for any new hires Alan brought onto the project. Day 87 was a great collection of the last few days' profits, which came just in time to hire the new miners. Day 88 saw the new miners arrive and get straight to work, and Alan's usual inspection taking place. Okay, so the final mine is fully operational, so let's do another quick tour again, see what we're getting out of this one. Jalver hard at work collecting malachite. I think that can be turned into orcish armour if I'm not mistaken. And this room is one of the most important, that important. We have someone sleeping down here all the time, mining as much as possible. And what ore is this, you're wondering? Well, Vermar is mining gold ore. We can turn this into jewellery and should be really, really profitable down the line. Okay, last ore vein. There's a couple having a break here, we'll say hello. How are you guys? Doing okay? Food looks lovely. You know what, I quite like the little break rooms. Nice and cosy, tucked away. But, but enough of that. The last ore is ebony ore. So once that's fully extracted, we can start making really nice weapons and armour. And that should sell for a lot as well. And on day 89, the first profit from the completed mine arrived, which was a whopping 3,690 gold. With no work left to complete, Alan could reflect on all of his progress. From a ruined mine filled with bandits, Alan had transformed it into a thriving community. It had everything it needed to support itself, and the group of people working at the mine were growing closer every day. But 
Alan's journey doesn't end here. He has big goals, and to feed an ever-expanding workforce, he's got to take his hard hat off and trade it in for another. While enjoying the warm fire in his office, he ponders where he can buy land to launch the Allenson farm.